On April 18, 1862, 46 federal warships steamed up the Mississippi towards Forts Jackson and St. Philip. Armed with 348 cannons and 21 mortars, it was the largest fleet the United States Navy had ever assembled. In command was the 60-year-old flag officer, David Farragut, a southerner who had spent much of his life in New Orleans. His friends among the rebels had urged him to defect, but he remained loyal to the United States. Mind what I tell you, you fellows will catch the devil before you get through with this business. Farragut was a man of his word. Day and night, the Union fleet rained down thousands of shells on the forts for nearly a week. The thunder of the guns was heard 50 miles away. Amazingly, the forts held. Mr. Sims, Sir. give him a broadside.
point, Farragut found his own ship ablaze with flames leaping halfway up the main mast. Still, he continued his relentless advance. He had absolutely no guarantee that he would be able to get past those forts with his vessels. He was taking a real chance. When daylight came, Farragut's fleet had virtually destroyed Confederate defenses on the river. Of all the ships that had tried to run past the forts, only two failed to make it. From there, Farragut and his men cruised upriver toward New Orleans unopposed. To avoid capture, General Lovell pulled his troops out before the fleet arrived, leaving New Orleans defenseless. On Friday afternoon, April 25th, the Union fleet dropped anchor at the foot of Canal Street. With the river running high that spring, Farragut's ships sat well above the levees. They trained their guns straight down on the city. Resistance was pointless. Confident in his victory, Farragut sent just two officers, unarmed, into the city. They walked abreast, unguarded and alone, looking not right or to left, never frowning, never flinching, while the mob screamed in their ears, shook cocked pistols in their faces, cursed and crowded, gnashed upon them. So through the gates of death, those two men walked to the city hall to demand the town surrender. It was one of the bravest deeds I ever saw done. Farragut had taken New Orleans, but keeping it would be charged to another man. While the Admiral and his fleet continued upriver toward Baton Rouge, the Union Army took possession of the city led by a general who would come to be called the Beast. <laughs> 